So this is my setup for getting the uh, drawing into Fusion 360. So this is the form rip drawing. See it right there. And I've got a tripod set up over it. So the only important thing about taking this picture, other than you want to try to get as large as you can, is to make sure the camera is level right to left, assuming your table's level, and front to back. And I've already set this one up. That way it won't distort the image. Um, a little bit off, it's no big deal. We can actually correct that. We can correct for rotation, although it would be good to have it as square as possible. Anyhow, and then just take a picture of it. Now I can import those into Fusion 360. Okay, so I've opened Fusion 360, and we're going to insert that picture, which I've saved on my desktop, that we took of the form rib as a canvas. So just insert canvas. I'm going to insert it from my computer. It's on my desktop here. There it is. And we'll just open it. it wants to know what uh, plane you're going to put it on. So I'm on the top here, and I'll just put it there, which is fine. So now we'll just leave open this editing on it and look at the drawing. And you can see this one's upside down. So we can just grab this circle and rotate it around 180 degrees. The other thing you want is to make sure that the chord line is parallel with the x-axis. And this is close enough for now. We can edit later if we need to. I don't think we're going to need to on this one. But if that was off, you would want to rotate it so that the uh, chord line was parallel to the x-axis. I'm just going to say OK. So now this rib what we're going to do is do a sketch on the same plane. I'm going to zoom in here on the nose tube and draw a line from the center. So we'll just zoom way in until we're, you know, we really are way beyond the resolution necessary. But center it on the crosshair there. Start our line. Zoom back out. Come back here to the tail of it. Do the exact same thing. We want the center for the tubes right there. <clears throat> so that's our line. So now we look at it, and as, as stated earlier, that the uh, cord was pretty close to the x-axis. There's a little error here. It could be from the picture, could be from the drawing, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> We've got a okay, good. Okay, so we have the line drawn on the cord, center to center between the the uh, front and aft uh, tubing. So now we want to know how long that is. So we'll just pick inspect. We're going to pick that line. If we look over here, it says it's 0.33 of an inch. So bring up a calculator here. The rib length that we want for the drawing or for the uh, full size is 26 and an eighth. So we'll just go 26.125. Divided by 0.33. All right, and we get 79.16, we'll just say 167. So now we can close down the measurement. We don't need that line anymore. Get rid of it. And we can go back to this canvas and edit it. And we're going to scale it. 79.167. We can just fit it to the, the drawing. All right, so now we're going to go back and put that cord in. Again, just draw right center here. and all the way down to the center of the other. Now in the perfect world that should be 26 and an eighth. It's a little off. We'll just go ahead and dimension it. 
And we'll make it 26.125. All right, so now it should be perfect. So there should be just a little difference. Yeah, it moved it down just a tad. So these tubes on the end are always 7 eighths. And this is what's different. This drawing, if you scale it for the very first rib, comes out really close on the end here. As you get to the smaller ribs, the tube will be a little different as far as its proportion to the rib. So this is 7 eighths. That one's actually right on. When you do the last one and you're down with an 18 inch rib, it'll be a little different. And this one is 7 divided by 8. You can see this drawing has got a little bit of error in it. So now we have the tubes in the correct spot, the correct, correct distance apart. So the next thing we want to do is put in this maximum cord, uh, maximum thickness of the airfoil. And there's two things shown on that, and one is it's three times one third of the length, and the other one is it's 0 0.09 of the um, length. So length times 0 0.09 is what the maximum thickness is. We're just going to draw a line here perpendicular, somewhere close. We'll do it a little long. So now we can dimension that. So we just come from the center of the circle to the line. And that's going to be the length, which is 26.125, divided by 3. All right, so that this is what the computer says is the perfect place for that line. So you can see everything's lining up with the with the um, print. So we know we've scaled it pretty accurately. So now we need to get the length for this line. So to do that, all we got to do is we'll use our calculator again. And we have to take, let's see, where is the call out? It's up there. There it is. We'll take the length of the rib, which is 26.125. And we're going to multiply it by 0 0.09. Oops. 26.125 times 0 0.09. And we get 2.35125. Okay, that's for the total length from there to there. We only want one half because we're just going to draw the top half of this and then mirror it down the bottom. So now we're going to divide it by 2. So 1.176, technically. So we're going to dimension this at 1.176. All right. So now we have all our uh, important points we have to hit. I'm going to change this to a construction line. And OK, so now all we want to do is come up here and pick a spline. We're going to zoom in and we're going to put it on the radius of this um, front tube. Did that wrong. Let's do that again. I'm going to put it right here on the actual um, straight up from the center. And the reason is, even though it's, there's a little bit of error there, you don't really want that to run over the front. You're going to put a weld in there anyhow. So it's going to fill any of that. Anyhow, so now we're moving up the arc here. And when you're doing a spline, the best thing to do is put a lot more points where things are changing direction. And when it's flat and smooth, you don't need to put nearly as many. <clears throat> so I'm going to start out with one here. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. We can edit it later. And then I'm going to put one up here. Just zooming in so that I know I'm within reason getting some pretty accurate. We don't need that. Okay, we have to hit this point here. So looks like we need to get a little thicker. I'm just going to go up here to the top part of the line. <clears throat> so we're always going to pick the actual maximum cord width. There's a lot less happening down this end, so we can put these further apart. We'll 
we'll just put a couple in here. Let's see where that circle ends up short. So we'll come in a little bit. And then one right on right on the and then you hit this little check mark to end it. <clears throat> All right, so now that's the fit of our spline. It looks pretty good. You can look at it, and if you see any little wobblies or divots that don't look good, you can move these points. Oops, not when you're still on the spline tool. You can move them around, and you can adjust them with the handles too, but um, I find that it's, it's a pretty good fit and you don't really need to play with that too much. I need to move this guy back down to where he was though. Okay. So I'm happy with that. So now all we need to do, since I haven't saved this in a while, I think I'll save it. So this is the 26.125, and we'll just call it the H rib for a horizontal stabilizer rib. Anyhow, so now we just need to mirror this line down the bottom. To do that, we'll pick the mirror, select our object, we'll come over here. Oh, we got two of them selected. Let's do that again. Select the object, select the mirror line, just this cord and it pastes it down below. Okay, so now we have a, a, the, the uh, rib and um, the outline's completely correct, so now we'll just get rid of some garbage. So we need to trim off this um, circle here so that it just fits the profile. So that with that done, the next thing we're going to do is um, all the lightweighting holes are going to be 5 sixteenths from the edge. That's the uh, what the print specifies. So we're going to put an offset in here that is 5 sixteenths in. It's just going to help us lay out these lightweighting holes. I'm going to lay out all the holes, uh, a quarter inch hole for every lightning hole that will be in the right position. And then that'll just help me be able to bolt the forms together to form the rib and also uh, lay out the lightning holes so that they meet the specifications. So we're going to put the first lightning hole right here. And this is um, where the maximum width of the rib is. So if we go all the way out to 5 sixteenths, you can see that it's almost one and three quarters of an inch. I'm going to use uh, eighth inch increments and make it 1.625 and there's our light weighting hole. So now we'll go to the front. We need to put in the next one. I'm just going to snap to the center line. Just pick any size and then the other requirement in the print is that they're five eighths apart. So I'm going to snap to the outside edge of these holes. and put this at 5 eighths. Now I can take this hole and resize it so that it meets the requirements. So that's one and a half. That's going to be good enough. And then I'll do the next one. Again, just put another hole on the center line. Any size really. Come up to mention it from the sides. Oops. There we go. Make that 0.625. And you'll notice my dimensions are disappearing because I'm turned. I have them turned off. I could turn them on. Like I said, it gets to be really busy. I'll leave them on for right now. So now we can take this hole, pick a size for it. It looks like uh, 1.375 might work. Yep. And I'm going to do that all the way to the front and all the way to the back. Okay, so I've drawn in all the holes, and so they're all within the 5 sixteenths guideline there, and they're 5 eighths apart, and it's really a mess to look at, so let's clean it up. I'm going to turn off all those dimensions. 
going to make this a construction line because and then the same thing with all these holes are going to be really just construction So now what I'm going to do is go in and draw a quarter inch hole in the center of each one of those. That I will actually cut on the router. That'll be what I bolt the two forms through. And my pilot or my center mark for all the uh, light waiting holes. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I have all those quarter inch holes in there and you can see them if I get it in the right place. So this is essentially done. One thing I wanted to mention, and it didn't show up as much as I thought it would on this print, is that when you scale this form, the forms will keep getting thinner, but this tube will always be 7 8 So your match on this line right here getting to that tube is going to get worse and worse as the ribs get smaller. But the critical dimensions are the thickness and the distance here for the maximum thickness and then the tube center. So once you set those, the rest of it, you know, there's a little bit of artistic license to it. Um, so with this done, we don't need to see the, the uh, canvas anymore. So we'll turn that off so we don't have that back there anymore. And uh, we'll go ahead and finish this sketch. So now we can extrude it. I'm going to bring it out three quarters. There. So that's the form for the second rib in. I'll run it through the router. Now I can see there's a little deviation up here at the nose coming to the tube. So I might bring that line over a little bit. Um, most likely wouldn't matter. Like I said, you're going to put a weld right there. But anyhow, you can get as critical as you want on going back and tweaking it because you can just go back in the sketch and change this spline and location to wherever you want it to be. The reality is you're talking about probably 15, 20 thousandths there, maybe a little more. It's, it's kind of a joke to be trying to tweak it too hard. So that gives me the part, and now I can go in and uh, set up the toolpath and generate the G code.